everybody. Matt Sellhorst, Boat Dealer Profits, the creator of the Splash System, where I'm committed to helping you sell more boats, make more money, and have more fun. I appreciate you joining us here on another episode of the Boat Dealer Profits podcast. I'm, I'm really excited about the guest that we have today. Uh, we met down at uh, the Marine Dealer Conference and Expo several years ago. I don't even know what year it was, but um, several years ago we met and just and connected and, and kind of hit it off with a, a similar approach to uh, sales and marketing. So I'm excited to introduce uh, Merrill Shaw, who's the COO of First Approval Source and a, a frequent presenter at 20 Groups and other uh, dealer organizations. He's been featured multiple times at the uh, Marine Dealer Conference and Expo and is uh, on the expert panel of presenters again this year with uh, two sessions. The first one is a pre-conference workshop, Maximize F&I Profits Regardless of Market Conditions, and he'll pre be presenting on the sales track with a session called 100% Turnover to F&I Idea to Reality. So Merrill, welcome to the podcast and, and thanks for joining me. I, I, I thought you'd be a, an excellent fit for the show uh, because of your your vast success in the marine lending industry and and other industries outside the um, the boating world, but also your understanding of the importance of of quality sales and marketing systems. So, kind of here's how I see the conversation going. I, I want to start with how you got started in the industry, move on to some of the learnings from the hundreds of dealers you've worked with over the years, and, and get your perspective on on sales and marketing in the boating industry overall. Hopefully, give some some good tactics as well. So. Let's start with, give us a little bit of background of, of Merrill Shaw. Where, how'd you get started and, and tell us a little about yourself. Sure. Well, thanks, Matt. I really appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to be on your podcast and to, to talk to you. Uh, I'm excited about this. It'll be a, it'll be a fun conversation. Um, my background is probably a little different to a lot of people in the industry. I actually spent probably 20 to 25 years doing high-tech um, business development, sales, marketing, operations, traveling the world, selling various technology solutions, um, but mostly with startup companies. And the last startup company I was with before coming to First Approval Source and getting this off the ground was um, a, an automotive startup that was dealing largely in the F&I space in the automotive industry. And I learned a ton of, in that about the good and the bad <laughs> that happens in, <laughs> in finance and insurance. <laughs> and yep. and, and uh, it, there's a lot, there's a lot, and I talk about this often when I'm doing presentations, there's a lot of ways in which the automotive industry has poisoned the, the waters for, uh, for marine F&I. But, but, but I, but agree, I learned yeah. a lot there. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's, it's almost in, in the automotive industry. It's, it's kind of like you, you, you want to buy a car and you have to get sent to the principal's office before you actually get to <laughs> buy the car. <laughs> um, so, but, but, but that a few years ago, um, I, we, I got together with some folks and we saw the opportunity to really help the Marine and to a, to a lesser extent, the RV F and I processes and industry. And that's kind of where we got off the ground here. And since then I've been, um, focused on getting out and talking to dealers, talking at, as you said, 20 groups, speaking at MDC and really trying to, to help dealers maximize their profits through F and I. Um, and, and there's really, as you said, I mean, there's, there's good practices and there are bad practices and, and, and good practices actually work better, which is, shouldn't come as a surprise it's, it's to anybody. How but, that works, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is. But I mean, and that shouldn't be a surprise, but, but every time I give a presentation and I, I say something that to me seems self-evident, I see somebody's eyes light up and it's like, Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah, the that, head that really works. Some of the basics. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, and it's a lot of it is not complicated stuff, um, but it's it's important stuff, and it's I, I, I guess it's stuff that people aren't born knowing. That you know, you've got to you've got to be taught, or you've got to you've got to get the understanding from somewhere. Um, and I mean, to their credit, I think a lot of these, a lot of marine dealers work really really hard at building up their stores and, and doing a great job in their showrooms. Um, and I think that the finance function is often uh, uh, treated as a little bit of a stepchild. And uh, I, I think I, I'm hoping, trying to help raise awareness that not only is it not a stepchild, but it can be an equal partner in the profits for the store. So, well, but, and, but that's yeah, my background. I've been, I've been, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I was just going to say the, the way, the way I see you all approach the finance world it not only can it can it um, fit nicely into the business as a, a nice profit center, 
But the way I see it, it can actually help you sell more boats. I mean, if you use it the right way and kind of the way I see you all approaching it in the industry, I think there's an opportunity for that piece. Not think of it like, okay, they already bought the boat. Now we look at, at F&I. But how can we use F&I early in the process to, to maybe even bring more people in the door, uh, which I think is a, a, smart, a smart way to look at it. Absolutely. I mean, one of the one of the tools that that we encourage um, dealers to use is um, a pre qualification uh, step that's on the website, and so it's a it's a lead generation tool. But basically, it says it's a you know on on the pieces of inventory you have a button that says get pre qualified, and you know on the main on the homepage you've got a get pre qualified t- panel that shows like a virtual credit consultant or shows something, and it says you know, get pre-qualified, name, address, and phone number, no social security number. And if somebody can go in there and find out whether they can, you know, whether they can buy a boat. Um, and it's a terrific lead generator. What the dealer gets on the back, on the back side of that is the dealer gets, at the very least, they get a name, address, and phone number. So you've got a live lead and it doesn't really matter what the result of the pre-qualification was. Dealer also gets a credit score and a, a full a full bureau, so they're going to know exactly what that customer looks like, um, and and that actually will double or triple the number of leads that a dealer website is generating. So, right off the bat, just the concept of getting getting pre qualified, uh, which is the first step in finance, uh, will drive a terrific amount more traffic. Um, yeah, and then and I look. Couple- I look at it with the um, with the educational spectrum as kind of the the backdrop of it, uh, which I don't know if you you've seen me talk about this or not in my in my uh, talks. But you know, when people go to buy a boat, the psychology isn't, hey, we go pick out our boat and we find the right boat, we decide that we're going to buy it, and then we think about financing. It's, hey, honey, we should buy a boat. And what are all the questions that come up in their mind? Well, they've got to research it, they've got to evaluate it, and then they become what I call a now buyer. And part of that research phase early in the process, before they maybe even know what kind of boat they want, is, holy crap, can we afford this? We would love a boat. How much does the boat cost? What does financing look like? Can we get a proof for financing? And that pre-qualification step just answers that so nicely. And that, that's why you guys get such great results with the, with the number of leads is that's a question that's on people's mind when they, when they have that first thought of, hey, maybe we should buy a boat. A- absolutely, and and now there's another tool that's available that couples risk with the pre-qualification, which is it's called the shop by payment tool. So when somebody fills out the uh, pre-qual form, they can also say, uh, they, a- answer a question of what payment would you like to make, and so they'll you know say two hundred ninety nine dollars a month, and yeah, that they, will they then show they don't think I want a I want a thirty thousand dollar boat. They think. I want a boat with, and I can I can handle a payment of two ninety, you know, three hundred a month, or two hundred a month, or a thousand a month. Doesn't matter what the number is, but that's that's how the prospect thinks. They, they don't think of exactly always in the price of a boat. Some do, but uh, but not the ones looking to finance. But the but the well, and the price of the boat is really pretty immaterial most of the time because it's it, it it translates to um, to payment. And so based on and, and so what happens is based on the actual results of the prequalification so credit score and credit profile and then the payment number that they put in they're able to see what boats they can buy that'll get them to that payment amount which is yep. I, I mean that's such an awesome tool because because it, it eliminates so many difficult questions that happen when a if a customer walks in and a sales guy is working with them and they're spending hours with them and the customers asking questions like well you know what interest rate can i get well that's a that's an impossible question for a sales guy to yeah. answer correctly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and they're right. But if they, I mean, because because they're not it, buying it, the. I mean, I've had people that that bought a boat with the eighteen percent rate. That you know, you're like, as a salesperson in my mind, like, who's going to do that? But guess what? They wanted the boat. They knew oh, things were going to change, and they knew they could they could improve that rate in a year. But getting the boat today, um, so so exactly. rate is oftentimes immaterial. Only in the salesperson mind does it matter. Um, the the customer sometimes <laughs> it uh, it doesn't matter at all. Right, but if you started out with with the payment question, the rate question never comes up because yep. the customer didn't say, "I want a three hundred dollar payment at five percent." They just said, "I want a three hundred dollar <laughs> payment." <laughs> yep. Yep. So, so th- those those are the tools that upfront, right off the website, 
and and also you, you can also do the same things when somebody comes into the store, but you do it kind of at, at the time of greeting. So you're not your sales guy is not spending five hours showing boats and doing test drives and the whole thing for somebody looking at a fifty thousand dollar boat when they can only afford a twenty thousand dollar boat. You you've right. got you, you can get that narrowed down and it saves your it saves your sales people time, energy, and it saves the customer some embarrassment too. At the end of the day, well, um, that, that's it, another uh, thought that popped in my head when you um, when you mentioned that's a difficult conversation. M- my mind instantly went to it's an embarrassing conversation. Uh, you know, it's an embarrassing conversation to to not know like you know I've got I've got decent credit, um, but you know, can I afford a boat? Um, yeah, that's that's embarrassing for the consumer. And if any way you can make that easier, you get more people into the funnel, and and um, of, of course. The um, some of them aren't going to qualify that that are having those thoughts, but a, a lot of them um, either now or, or in the future will uh, will be. Well, right, and and the fact is, if if they're not going to qualify, they're they're if they're not going to qualify, and so yeah. putting them through. <laughs> whether you know it today, or whether you know it uh, a month from now, when you're you demoed up and spent a whole bunch of time, like things don't magically improve yeah. like that. I don't think. <laughs> exactly. So, so you know, letting 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 a customer find out kind of pretty pretty much on their own terms whether they're going to qualify or not, um, you know, that's a that's a better thing. I mean, it just it's a better experience, and and ultimately the customers are going to be happier about that um, because yeah. it's it is it is really embarrassing if you've gone through the whole process and then you finally sit down in front of a finance manager and the finance manager pulls your credit and says, well, um, you know that that yacht you're looking at well this canoe over here is really more suited to your finances and yeah that's just not <laughs> that's not a comfortable conversation and, and we've all as you know I, I sold for i sold for five years or so and every salesperson even if you sold for a year has had that experience of you know you go through the whole process you think you're you get the deposit you demo you, you know they're they're hesitant to send the credit app in you know and and do that part of it uh, and you keep pushing them and finally you do. And, and sure enough, they've, uh, you know, they've yeah. got credit issues or, or they, you know, have something out there. Well, the reason they were hesitant to do all that is because they were embarrassed, but if they could do it in the privacy and comfort of their own home, check it out and find that out. You can also save some time, but then there's other people right. that are like, come in saying, Oh, you know what, Matt, I, I'm, I had some issues on my credit. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to, to even get a boat loan. And they go through and you find out, yeah, I mean, you can get our, our tier one rates. You're, you're good to go. Um, so it helps yeah. you on both sides. Well, at, at, it gets you. Right. And, and the beauty of the prequal is that it, it, it's, a, it's what's called a soft credit pull. So it doesn't require a social security number. So it does not impact uh, a customer's credit. You can do these all day long and it, there's no negative impact on the credit as there is with a hard credit pull. Um, so the customer gets to learn everything without any risk to their credit score at all. So it's, it's a really, it's a really good tool. Yeah. And, and you're going to get a higher number because you take out that social security question, you know, whether they're exactly. nervous of, of security, whether they're, Oh, I don't want my credit pulled. And they're, they're concerned about that. It's just one less thing for them to answer, which is going to increase. Um, and there, there's a big benefit. W- one thing I want to, I want to ask you, because I, I've got my own thoughts around this, but do, do you coach your dealers to handle those people differently than they do somebody that doesn't come through the prequal process. Does that make sense? Well, Am I asking that right? Like, yeah, no, it does. It, 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 okay. So somebody who's just flocked and they haven't prequaled or done anything and, and versus yeah, so somebody they, who's gone through the prequal. Say, I'll give you the example. I'll give you the example. I come in, I'm searching around on, on boats. I find one that I think is interesting. I'm questionable financing. So I do this prequal and on, you know, Friday morning, the sales guy comes in and gets that lead. Um, what's their approach to when they contact me? Um, because in my head, I, I can see there being a disconnect from the salesperson thinking, oh, I've got a lead. I'm going to treat that like every other lead versus I've got a prequal lead. I need to take a step back and understand where, where this lead is coming from and how to handle them. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, so sure. I mean, if if a, if a if a sales guy has got a lead that's done the prequal, I mean, that's a that's a well. First of all, that's a warmer lead because the customer has already provided more information than they might have otherwise, um, yeah. and you know more about them. You know, you know more about them as the sales guy. So your approach to that customer is 
you know, hey, Mr. Mr. Customer, uh, this is great. I see that you've already gone through and gotten pre-qualified. Um, we've got a lot of boats here that are going to be just perfect for you. So let's go take a look at those at those uh, at those units. Um, if you don't know the information about the customer, then then you, I mean you're still obviously enthusiastic, but you, you'd still like them to get pre-qualified. So you can still you could still ask them to go ahead and do that. Um, um, but yeah. but I but I always recommend now if a customer's done the prequal and if they especially if they've done the shop by payment thing already then you know the answer to this question. But one of the first questions once you've gotten to know the customer just a little bit is what payment are you looking for? I I recommend right. asking the what payment are you looking for question early and often um, because it, that also helps you determine right away if a customer's thinking that they're a cash a cash buyer. Um, right. Because obviously. Obviously, the handling of a cash buyer is a little different than the handling of a uh, payment a payment buyer. Now, the reality is um, that cash buyers only ten percent of people who tell you that they're buying cash are using uh, what what's called liquid cash. So, using you know just writing checking account or savings truly, account. Yeah, truly writing a check right. versus having home equity or, or going to their credit union or whatever. Exactly. Exactly. So the reality is that 90% of your cash buyers aren't really. And so that that what payment are you looking for question is going to trigger some thoughts. And it helps you as you do the turnover to your F&I department. Or I, we, we actually coach dealers to eliminate the F&I department, turn it into a delivery department. And you have a delivery okay. coordinator or a delivery manager because it takes that negative automotive connotation completely out of the equation. Um, right, right. Now, because um, because now you, I mean, what's when somebody's buying a boat? What do they want? They want to take it home. They want to take delivery and, and and go enjoy the boat. So so what you're doing is saying this is the delivery coordinator. This is the person that's going to help you do that. And so, I mean, and this is a little bit um, off track, but. We, we recommend that in addition to the what payment are you looking for right up front, we recommend that you introduce the customer to the delivery coordinator before they've looked at a single boat. So okay. you introduce them by say by saying, hey, I just want to introduce you to Bob. He's going to be the delivery coordinator. As soon as we figured out what boat you've fallen in love with, he's going to help you from there. And now you've got a reason, whether they're paying cash, whether they're doing payments, whatever, you've got a reason that they have to get with that delivery coordinator. So you, right. you've avoided the guy that wants to just stand on the floor and write a check without talking to anybody. You've got to go see yep. the delivery coordinator, but they know it They know it going into the process instead of it being a transition step after they've picked out a unit. Um, right. You're, you're, you're so, thinking ahead of the game. You're, you're planning that, hey, this is what we where we want to get for our end game. How do we make it easy for the customer to get there versus a, a battle for the customer to get there? It's a benefit exactly. now for the customer to talk to the delivery coordinator. I mean, that's that's who I want to talk to eventually. I, lo- I love that. Exactly. I love that uh, thought process. Yeah, yeah. So, so, but you know, back to the the question. I mean, if if a if you, if, if a customer hasn't pre qualified and they don't know or won't answer the question of what payment they're looking for, uh, that's a that's a tougher customer to work with. But but almost any customer, if you say what payment are you looking for, they've got something in mind, or they're going to say, "I'm, right. I'm going to pay cash." And in, in which case, the the customer who says at that point, "I'm going to pay cash," the salesman says, "Okay, that's terrific. Um, you know, we'll just make sure that you've already met Bob. I'll make sure I tell Bob that for you know when when we've picked out your unit, and then yep. then you let Bob, the delivery coordinator, do his magic." about maybe converting that cash buyer to a finance buyer or at least making some money on the back end. Right. Absolutely. Well, and, and still has the opportunity to sell any other products that you may offer, um, you know, whether it's exactly. extended warranty exactly. or, or service service packages uh, paid up front um, and yep. one more attempt to, uh, to get some financing um, or, or at least compete for financing um, and, and definitely insurance. Exactly. Um, and I think that's important. I mean, and there's a there's actually a cautionary tale in this because I know of personally know one dealer who wasn't treating cash buyers the same way they treated finance buyers, and so they they were not giving them the back end presentations for cash buyers. And it turns out that um, one of their customers um, paid cash was not offered the back end 
products presentation. So it was not offered an extended warranty. Ended up having an issue that would have been covered by an extended warranty. Came back to that dealer, sued them because they treated them differently and won that lawsuit. So yep. it's, it's important that every customer get treated the same in terms of getting the same opportunity to get the best deal in terms of payments and also to get the same opportunity to get the best protections in terms of extended warranties, protective products, insurance, and, and all those other, other things. Um, and and it's so one of the, it's one of the steps and, and, and not for that reason, my, mine is purely a, a, a it's profitability reason, but in the sure. slash system, when you get to that phase, there's a step, which I, I would venture to say you guys have something similar. Um, but, uh, just a form that offers all of your F and I products that they may qualify for that they have to say no to, they actively have to say no to it. So one, if they, you know, if your salespeople, it's a system, it's a form that has to be signed in the package. So there is a hundred percent, um, uh, offering uh, of those products to a hundred percent of your deliveries, which is just by the nature of doing it that way, you're going to get an increased, uh, number of sales, increase your profit. And from what you just said, I, that wasn't the, the intent behind this at all, but it, it sounds like protects you on the risk side from not doing that, uh, which is, no, is certainly a benefit. But, yeah, absolutely. I mean, and you're right. I mean, the, 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 the positive proactive reason for the hundred percent turnover and hundred percent presentation is what you said. You, I mean, a bunch of the people that are paying cash will pay for protective products as well because yep. they, they're paying cash because they don't want a, a payment later on. And so they, they'll they buy a protective product. So if something happens, they don't have a payment later on. So they'll still they'll still buy those products. It's, um, it's just important to present them. And so, you know, we recommend this, uh, that there's a menu system in place so that you can offer them bundles of these products, kind of small, medium, large, or small, medium, large, and extra large bundles. Um, yep. and, 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 and you're right, there's an active decline on those things and those bundles and the packages, regardless of whether the customer said they were paying cash or not, are always shown in terms of a payment. They're always shown in terms of a payment because that gives the customer another chance to think about, well, gee, maybe, maybe, it, you know, $250 a month, this is worth my not tapping my home equity line or, you know, not not or, or it's not even as good as the credit unions. I mean, it's better than the credit unions doing for me. So, yeah. you yeah. present those products all the time, and and when they finally say they don't want anything, then they have to physically sign and say, "I've been presented with these options and I've declined them." I would I would venture to say, and you may have a, a better a hard number on this, but I would venture to say there is a a distinct increase in that revenue and that profit by oh, no other changes at all, no other changes at all, but making the customer sign a form saying, I do not want any of these with a presentation of each package um, in a, a, a reasonably, not even an excellent, but a reasonably good sales presentation on a form that says uh, extended warranty, um, insurance, service package, whatever it is, um, gap or whatever. Um, did you have any, any gut feel or, or hard numbers on, yeah, we've seen a 20% increase in F&I revenue just by doing that one little thing. Yeah, it, actually, it's 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 between twenty and thirty percent. Yeah, I figured it would be at, at least twenty uh, because it's there's my wife is a prime example. My wife is a warranty buyer. If she gets offered a warranty, she will buy it. That's but not many people offer it to her. Um, but if they do, she's somebody that is risk averse and says, "Well, shoot, I don't want to have to spend a thousand bucks if this thing breaks down." Um, and yeah, I'm in for, I'm in for $750. That seems like a good, a good, uh, a good decision. Uh, but if you don't offer it to her, she won't ask about it. Right. Yeah. And I, I, I do think there's a, there's a lot of people that are like that. So when, for people that we've seen that went from no system or a, a weak system to, to do in the 100% and enforcing a decline, their, their numbers have gone up. I mean, some of them went up. Dramatically, I mean, some of them weren't really offering back end. A lot of dealers yeah. <laughs> really don't yeah. spend time on back end products. They just don't. Um, yep. And frankly, that what we see is when you're doing it right, um, your the back end product profit sh it should be probably half or maybe even more of the total F and I profit in your store. So, okay. you know, there's two, there's two components to F and I profit. One is the the reserve. 
or that difference, you know, the, the, the commission you make on the on the contract for sure. bumping the buy rate up by a point or a point and a half or two points. Um, and then there's the back end, the back end. And the dealers should be selling back end pretty darn close to half the time. And when they do, the, the numbers that they should be looking at are about eight and a half of the eight and a half percent of the amount financed should be profit on the back end. So that's a yeah. that's a significant that's a significant contributor to the and total it's profit. A, yeah, because it's the same way it's the same way I look at at increasing the sales price for the boat is if you can increase your sales price on a boat by just five hundred dollars on average, um, that five hundred dollars is, is virtually all profit because you've already paid the rating mm-hmm. expense. You've already paid the, um, you know, to cover your costs. You've already paid your, you know, your percentage of fixed, whatever allocated to that unit. Um, and, and then you add another, what'd you say? 8%? Yeah. Eight and a half, but yeah, yeah you, you add another, you add another 8% or so or whatever, you know, uh, whatever that dollar amount is, that's virtually, you know, you're probably paying commissions on it to your sales team, but you know, that's virtually all profit because it's, you know, you've already done 90% of the work. And, um, you know, all you have to do is ask. I mean, that seems like pretty easy money to me. Well, I mean, I, I, yeah, you, you're right. I mean, there's a, there's a little bit more variable cost because of commissions and stuff, but it's really, but if, I mean, if you take a, you know, a $40,000 boat and you make, you add 8% profit on that, that's another $3,200 of profit. That's, yeah. that's, um, that's enough to open anybody's eyes. And if you're, if you're well, doing that on 50% of the units that you sell, that's, that's, that's like real money. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, that changes you from, from getting by to, man, we can make some investments in the dealership. We can bring on that extra person so I can have some more time off. Um, and, and not only that, but going back to from the customer's perspective, the customers that do accept that, they, they feel more secure. They, they, they bought it because they thought there was value there. And if they do have a claim, I mean, man, you just saved somebody's boating, you know, maybe even their time in boating. You extended it. And you gave them that confidence and that level of security. So there's, it's not like it's just a, a greedy profit grab. It's a, you know, hey, you're you're in business to make a profit and to do great things for your your customers and your clients. So the ones that buy that find tremendous value in those types of products. I mean, it's a it's a win all absolutely. the way around. Yeah, absolutely. And I still I still hear way more than I'd like to. Somebody, uh, uh, and it's the sales guys who say it's not the it's not the General managers, it's not the owners really who I hear say this very often. It's the sales guys. They'll say, you know, I just don't believe in those uh, extended warranties. They're just a ripoff. Yep. And I'm like, yep. but they're not. They're not. There's real value there. There's all and, you've got to do is have you, somebody who's. Yeah. No, all you got to do is have somebody who's needed to take advantage of it one time, and yep. suddenly you you know why they're a good thing. Um, yeah, and it's and, also and it's, fact, yeah for that salesperson, the psychology of that salesperson. You're in sales because you're more of a risk taker. You're you're willing to work based on performance, and, and your mentality is more risky. I'm not a warranty buyer. I, I I I don't buy them for me because I'm willing to take the risk. My wife, on the other hand, buys tremendous value in them. And when we're buying a vehicle together, we're she's telling me we're getting this because I don't want to have this happen to us. And so she gets tremendous right. value from it, and we buy them. I mean, you know, um, <laughs> so it's, it's regardless, regardless of what the salesperson thinks, you know, the salesperson may not buy that style of boat either. But guess what? If that's the right fit for the customer, that's what they should buy. The extended warranty right. products may not be the right fit for the salesperson, but if it's the right fit for the customer, it's it's almost your duty um, to offer them. I mean, you're doing them a disservice by not. Oh, exactly. No, I mean it's a disservice all the way around. I mean, it's a disservice because you're you're chopping out profit. You're you're putting the customer at risk for their enjoyment of the product, and you're actually putting this door at potential legal liability. So it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. That part too. Is, <laughs> so is, uh, as a, it's as just a, a it's just a owner, risk all the way around. Yeah, as a dealership uh, owner, putting a, a simple system and it doesn't have to be complicated. The one the one I use is is certainly not. I would guess the one you have is is probably even. Um, even integrated easier into the into the program since you're the one offering the the uh, the stuff. But right. yeah, it's a it's a no brainer to increase profit in my mind um, for for all three of those reasons. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so now, I mean, so I, I, but actually, that goes to that goes to the other reason. I I talk to dealers who talk about having 
having their salespeople be the ones who desk the deals or do the whole, yep. the, they, you know, the soup to nuts process. And I, I just, I, I can't tell those, those owners or, or GMs what a horrible idea that is loudly enough. It's not <laughs> that the salespeople are bad people. <laughs> it's, it's not, I mean, they're good people, but, but I, you know, I refer to it as the Stockholm syndrome. Um, once you've spent four hours with somebody and now they're ready to sign on the dotted line, the last thing that you as a sales guy, I mean, all you're thinking about is great. I'm getting my commission on this boat. Let's get this guy out of here before anything let's else. Not, can yeah, happen let's not do wrong. anything to screw this up. Let, <laughs> let's not do anything, make any offers that are going to turn this thing sideways. I, well, I know I, I've, I've had those same thoughts go through my head. Um, but uh, yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, so let's, so, let's change gears real quick. Cause I think oh, yeah, unless yeah, you have sure. anything else to add on that. No, 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 I'm good. Okay, awesome. I, I, I think, that is incredibly valuable for, for those that, um, you know, aren't doing it, you know, on a $40,000 boat, another $3,200 in, in, um, additional revenue, which is extremely high margin, um, is, is something like you said, it's, it's worth looking at <laughs> for sure. But I want to, I want to ask you, yeah, 3,200 bucks per deal. Yeah. Nah, I don't need it. I don't, that's too much work. Yeah, exactly. That's too much work to look at. I'm not going to do it. So, um, but one of the things that, that uh, Merrill kind of uh, attracted um, me to you as in, in our conversations was just the, the questions and the, the way you kind of think about, um, about sales and marketing. It, just, it, it seems that we have some similar thoughts. I, I'm just curious, with all the dealers that you've worked with and, and uh, you know, mystery shopping and being at boat shows and just being around the retail boat world, what are, what are two, of the three, two or three of the things that you see over and over um, or, or hear from people um, that are, are prospects out there buying that, man, this is something that, that kept me from buying a boat or this was a pain point in, um, in the, the purchasing process or the shopping process. Anything that jumps to mind? Yeah, I think that and, and this isn't actually unique to boat, boat sales. Um, this is true, I think, almost universally. Um, the sales guy who talks more than he listens the one who's yeah. selling by telling rather than selling by asking uh, right uh, and, and I, I mean i see it all the time you got the, the sales guy that's out there that just he can't stop talking about you know and, and, and more often than not they're not talking about the benefits they're talking about the features uh, right what they love and, about the boat and, yeah, exactly. It, that's exactly right. And, and what and what they love is, you know, um, look at look, look at the quality of the carpet, or look at the you know whatever it is. I mean, but they're 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 just talking about about stuff. And they're I talk about when I when I tell the when I talk to the salespeople, I say you got to if you if you're selling something, you got to have a story. Sell by stories. Talk about another customer and why they love this particular thing so much. Um, but really, what you need to be doing is saying to the customer that you're talking to, you know, what's important for you? What are you looking for? What, 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 how are you planning on using your boat? What, you know, what's going to make it best for you? And as you hear those questions, you're going to go to the boats that the customer is actually self-selecting into, um, as opposed to sell, taking the customer to the boats that you want to sell because they've got a higher margin or because there's a special deal, a special sales promotion inside the store going on. It's, it, I, I really, and it, the same thing goes for all of the back end products as well. You've got to, you've got to let the customers tell you and, and kind of self select in to what they're buying. And when you do that, you're going to end up with a much happier customer and a much easier sales process. Um, and when you don't do it, the customer is going to walk out and say, you know what? I, I just didn't feel like they got what I was looking for. It's um, and that that lines up. Per and, and again, like I said, I, I felt like we clicked on a lot of things. And this is this is part of my splash system. I'll tell you a quick story. When I decided to get into the boat business, um, the first thing I did was I went to the boat show and shopped all the dealers uh, in in my market area, Charlotte, North Carolina. And um, time and time again, I walked in. And, you know, I was thirty something you know, dressed as a, a boat buyer would be dressed. So I, I looked the part, um, walked into dealer booth after dealer booth and just got a thousand and one things that the person presenting to me loved about the boat and why that was the perfect boat. 
without a single question, like you said about, you know, how are you going to use the boat? What lake are you going to be on? You know, do you have kids? Um, just some, some simple questions right. that would have easily cut out 900 of the things that they talked about because they weren't important to me, but they could have focused on the 20 that would have been perfect for, for me and my boating lifestyle. Um, and one, make the conversation more engaging. Two, like you said, it, it really does make the sales process easier. Uh, I mean, because you don't have to present a thousand and one things. You can focus on the things that, that really, really matter. Um, and and I, right. I still see it over and over and over when I mystery shop. Um, and the, the Absolutely. second is the is story, which you mentioned. Um, you know, I, having, a, having a story kind of loaded in your brain for, you know, 10 or 20 different scenarios that you're like, oh, yeah, let me tell you about the Jones family and how they use this. And they were just like you guys. Um, it's just it, it just makes everything more interesting and easier. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I tell the people, the delivery coordinators, the same thing. When you're talking about, you know, the protective products or or, or the gap waiver, um, have a story. You know, the, the Joneses, you know, they, they, they bought a boat and they, they you know, they were, they were sitting at their dock and a, a drunk boater came along, rammed it and sank the boat. But because they had gap, they were able to be back on the water in 10 days. Yep. Um, you know, yep. that's that's a that, that's a lot better than trying to explain gee you know if you're upside down and alone and something happens and you get a total loss i mean that that's just words but if you can personalize those words then it then it really works yeah i had i had a client that that exact thing happened to they they bought a pontoon um they rented a trailer from us to or rented a trailer from somewhere to take it down on their vacation before they even put it in the water uh drunk driver smashed into the back of it, totaled the pontoon. Um, and they did it, it. Mine was the reverse. Mine was, they didn't use the insurance company that I recommended. They didn't have the, uh, the gap coverage. And so not only did the insurance company not pay out as much as they should have or much as they could have, but they also had, you know, the, the, um, the gap to deal with. And when they bought their yep. next boat, you know, it was, guess what they did? They, they took they the got, products yeah. that I offered them because <laughs> they just got on the bad end of that deal. And, uh, yeah. and yeah, I use that, that story. I, I can still, you know, Herb and Herb and Ashley Mantell, I, I still know their, their boat. Um, you know, just, <laughs> that was a story that was loaded and, and it is perfect for, for that situation. Yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely. Right. Any, anything, anything else along those lines? That, that's a perfect, that's a perfect example and, and such an easy one to, to address. You, well, it, the, the, I mean, well, I, it's I easy to identify. Say, it's, <laughs> there you go. There you it's go. Sim simple to figure out that that's an area difficult to get your, your team to do it, maybe. <laughs> maybe that's yeah. a better way to approach it. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah the, 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 solution, the solution to that is often painful to at least one of the parties. But, um, well, this is true. This is true. <laughs> um, but uh, but it, it does make everything so, more, more uh, smooth. Y yes, for sure. Well, you know, I, I guess, and the other thing is just to to be uh, be thoughtful, and as a as a manager, help your help your team, help your help your salespeople, help your delivery coordinator, be thoughtful in the language that they use. I mean, and the the change from a finance manager to a delivery coordinator is is an example of that. Don't don't use don't use scary words um, about yeah. you know the uh, don't don't make the boat seem more complicated than it needs to. You want to focus. You want to focus on the fun. You want to talk. Focus on the value. You 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 want to take away the parts that are going to be risky or scary to the to the greatest sure. extent that you can. And, and a lot of that a, lo a lot of that goes back to stories. If you if you're really talking stories, then you're talking. I, I mean, the story of getting getting rammed by a drunk driver before you get in the water is a little bit of a scary story. But the but but it had a happy ending with, right. with the next boat. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so so you just I, I, you just want to make sure that you're not down in the weeds. You're not da you're not so deep in the details. You're selling you're selling benefits, not features. Um, and you're you're because benefits are by nature positive. Features are are scary and boring because there are listed technology things fundamentally. Um, that cause people's eyes to glaze over, and so you you want to stay you want to stay on the high ground, stay positive, make people feel good about what they're doing. Yeah, that it's it, this this theme comes up over and over in these conversations. Is um, oh, we have such an amazing 
product and service that we offer. Um, you know, it, it's not just selling bows. It's not just selling the F and I products and um, in that, but you're selling a whole lifestyle to people. Exactly. Um, you know, I, I, I got started boating when I was five years old and it's, it was a part of being a sell horse. The sell horse family were boaters and we had our boating friends and we had our boating vacations. And it was, you know, to this day, I would venture to say that like half of my memories of my, my best memories revolve around boating in some way, whether it was going to boat shows or vacations or learning to ski or, you know, getting towed in because we ran out of gas. And, you know, it doesn't matter. There's, <laughs> there's a memory that's yeah. related to boating. And had we, had we not gotten into it, that part of my life would be empty. Um, so I think we always need yep. to remember that. That's right. That's right. And the, and the entire process from the first time at, at, and all this stuff starts to happen before you've even met your customer. I mean, it's got to be from a, from a dealer perspective, it's got to be your website, whatever advertising you're doing. You're not, you're not out there talking about, you know, the, the, the great way that the propeller spins on the engine. You're talking about the lifestyle that, that this is going to go and, and the fun and the memories and the, what, you know, all those things. And that, that starts on the website. It starts on your advertising. It continues with signs in your store. It continues with the conversations you're having in the store. And it, it continues with the pleasant way that a delivery coordinator helps you take, you know, the, the, the boat you've fallen in love with and get it out as easily as possible under the terms that are really good for you, because that's all part of the, of the value of the lifestyle. And, that whole, and it's going to continue, hopefully, you know, in your service, in your service drive as well. So, you know, when people yeah. are in there, you can still, you can still be making, helping them make memories that they're going to be happy about, as opposed to, I never want to see these guys again, as long as I live. Um, yeah, which, absolutely. And, and you, you said another thing, you, you mentioned it several times, but it just clicked with me now is don't use scary words. Um, two yeah. thoughts on that. One, uh, one of my one of my um, longtime people I've studied in sales is Tom Hopkins. I mean, just if you don't have uh, any Tom Hopkins training material, you, you should get it for any salespeople yeah. that are listening to this. Uh, act like a lamb, sell like a lion. It's probably 20 years okay. old. Best hundred bucks you'll spend. Um, it, it's awesome. <laughs> but uh, he has he has a list of words that you don't say. You know, it's not payments, it's monthly amount. It's not this, it's that. Um, and it's not the F&I person. It's uh yeah, it's your delivery coordinator. I wasn't a salesperson. I was a pleasure boat specialist. That's you know I'm like nobody wants to talk to a salesperson. <laughs> they want to talk to a specialist. So I'm the pleasure boat specialist. But when you, as a dealership owner, when you take some time and step back and think about those things, like what other little tweaks can you make to make that experience of your dealership more friendly, inviting, engaging than at your competition? And uh, that that delivery Absolutely. coordinator, I, I I really like that. I really really like that. So. Um, but let's talk, um, one of the, the, um, things that we talked about was, what do you see kind of what, um, any other thoughts on, on sales and marketing just in general in the, in the boating industry that kind of jumps out at you? Cause you're not, you're not in the dealership every day. So you probably have a different perspective on, on what's good, what's bad. And you probably see things from a different lens. Um, what do you see out there that you really like? Hmm. Well, I, I, I think I'm going to answer a different question. So here's here's what I see. I mean, I think they kind of tie together. Um, I think it's easy for people to forget that that being in sales and or being a pleasure boat specialist is it's it's it, it, and being a delivery coordinator. These are these are positions that. They're professional positions that require um, training and ongoing training. And and I, I the thing I see the, the the leading dealers that I work with really take the training concepts to heart. And they're always offering some kind of training, whether they're getting somebody to an online course or they're getting somebody in to work with their people. Um, because you can always get better. Anybody can always get better with training um but it's uh, the, the the dealers who i see that are struggling they, they they don't they don't value that training concept and so the the people are kind of freelancing it they're kind of doing what they kind of comes naturally to them um and it's 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 just a, a, a it's just a problem and i think i think everybody needs to recognize that 
I mean, people think that, you know, car sales guys are just, you know, rip off artists and all that stuff. But I will tell you that there's a lot of money that goes into training. Yep, training. And this is this is absolutely the marine industry is absolutely as professional an industry. I, it's just it's more fun than cars for sure. sure. But but it's it's just as professional, and I think it needs to be treated that way. Um, and I I I do see, you know, you look at the well the top 100 dealers they take training seriously, and you look at what would amount to the bottom 100 dealers, and they don't. And I think that right. that's a huge piece of the difference. Yeah, it's and. The one of the things I've enjoyed about this podcast is is getting different perspectives. I, I think I think that is you know I've had people on that are in technology that are dealers yourself in in F and I. Um, I, I interviewed uh, the other day. Um, uh, the uh, the name is escaping me right now. Um, from the uh, Recreational Boating and Fishing Foundation, and everybody comes with their own perspective. I think that's something that that is valuable from training. Is somebody that's outside of your day to day. Every day, you walk probably through that same front door for the last 5, 10, 30 years maybe and just get that outside view and some fresh ideas. Um, and and yep. I myself, I've got, a, I've got a coach. I've got a trainer that you know I talk to twice a month. We get a, a, a coaching call, and um, once a month, I talk to him directly. Um, but it's, it's that accountability as well as that outside yep. perspective of, Hey, listen, you know, I know you've been doing it like this for a long time, but what do you think about the delivery coordinator role instead of the, the F and I guy, you know, just that, mm -hmm. that type of thing isn't something that you're going to come if you just stay in your little world of your dealership that you've been around for, you know, generations potentially. Right. So I, I would agree right. with that. That, that to me is agree with that, but <laughs> <laughs> well, no, to me and uh, that, that to me is one of the, real values of the 20 groups that I've been involved with too, is that it just brings a level of accountability into doing all that. And as painful as it is, you know, when the 20 group goes and visits your dealership, um, then you, you certainly get a whole lot of ideas that are from a different perspective than your own. Yep. And there's a, there's a yeah. ton, like I said, it, I, I suspect that's a very painful experience for some people, but it's a very useful one. And, and in some ways, the more painful, the better, because you're actually, you're getting more out of it when it's, when it's painful. If you go aside and say, am I, am I here in this business to have a big ego um, and to be the, the person that makes all the decision and that's either right or wrong by my hand, or am I here to be highly profitable, giving a stable, secure, and, and a, a highly, um, we want to say uh, a, a great opportunity to make an income for a lot of people in the community and, and likely family members. Um, I, I hope right. the answer would be, I'm here to be profitable. You know, there's a, a lot of risk and a lot of work that goes into owning the dealership. Um, you know, take advantage of the rewards and, and don't uh, limit right. those opportunities. Right. So, well, let's, right. Um, we're, we're coming up on, on, um, uh, on a cutoff here uh, for a, a coaching call that I have uh, with the client, but, um, tell me a little bit about, and along these lines, well, the Marine Dealer Conference and Expo, um, you mentioned mm -hmm. getting outside perspective, getting training that, that is a great opportunity, um, awesome. for, uh, for that outside. I mean, there's some, some great speakers, um, uh, yourself will be doing, doing two of the sessions. I, I highly encourage, um, if the conversation here resonated with you, if, if you would like to add an extra couple thousand, you know, $3,200 on a $40,000 transaction to your, um, uh, to your gross, um, you know, if that if that's of interest to you, you might want to check out Merrill's session, um, and his uh his pre uh, uh pre workshop because those are are very interactive and you're actually getting stuff done, which I, I love those uh, sessions. But that's a great opportunity um, to to get yeah. some of that training and, and to hear some to hear some uh, new ideas. Um, but to any last any last thoughts or our last word, Merrill, on on um, kind of the conversation we we covered we covered a lot. It seems. Uh, which is excellent. Yeah. Well, I think so. The, the the one other the one other thing that I would say that's important and that I don't see enough dealers really doing is to make sure that you're articulating the goals, and I mean specific goals. So when I look at it, like from an F and I perspective, you know, so what's your goal for how many how many units should you be financing? And and the answer is at least fifty seven percent of your transaction should be financed. And of those transactions that you find, of, of all the store, of the customers that walk into your store, how many should be buying back end products, whether it's cash or finance? And that answer is, you know, forty seven percent. But 
But you need to have those goals. You need to put them out there. You need to make sure everybody understands what your goals are. And, and then you need to be tracking them because that's what the, that's when you track your goals and manage to them, that's what makes magic happen. That's when you start to have consistent, manageable profits. And this is a big part of what my pre-conference workshop is about. But, you know, the, the way to manage your profits, regardless of changing market conditions, is to use best practices and tracking your goals. You can, you can, you can manage what you measure. And so measure, measure the things that are important and track them, but don't just keep them like locked up in your head. Your whole team has to be on board with what those goals right, are. So right. you need to be, yep. you, you need to have a, you know, a whiteboard up someplace or uh, with, with how are we doing this month? How are we doing this quarter against all of our important metrics and, and really work on that and make it fun. I mean, go ahead and have a contest. And, you know, at the end of a quarter, the person who's done the best on those goals, give them up, you know, a hundred dollar gift card or, or a night out on the town or, or something. Um, but it doesn't have to be a, a, a punishment ritual, but it, you, you just get those goals out there, make it fun and manage to them. And that's going to drive profits um, like like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, yeah. It's, I, I would venture to say you could walk into a, a, a high percentage of dealerships out there that have the ability to offer some of the, those products. And the, the frontline salespeople don't know anything about it, don't have enough confidence to know about it, or even know that. Hey, that could really make an impact on the on the uh, profitability of the dealership, and um, you know, give them additional sources of income. And it's really not that difficult if you if you just put a exactly. little focus on it. Um, that that's awesome. Exactly. Well, hey, Meryl, I, I I really appreciate it, man. This has been a, a great conversation. I think you've, you've shared a, a lot of value that um, that people can use, like like right away. You know, this isn't stuff that uh, yeah. is you know just hey, if you don't have access to the products, give Meryl a call. If you have access to the products and you're you're not using them yet, figure out ways to uh, to put systems in place. And systems can be as simple as, hey, here's how we do it, and we turn it over to our delivery coordinator, and here's the form that they use to make sure it's being offered. Um, and this is the the goals that we have set for each each month, each quarter, whatever it is. Um, and uh, you know, and start making that extra. You know, I, I hesitate to say profit, but a, a large chunk of it is is profit. And, um, and I think it, that's, that was incredibly valuable. So um, I, I appreciate it. I will see you down at, uh, at MDCE. And, uh, and thanks for joining us. Hey, Matt, I really appreciate it. And just to, to reinforce what you said, I would welcome anybody to my sessions. And if you don't see me there, uh, first approval source will have a booth. So I'll be hanging out in the booth. And you're welcome to stop by for a chat. But Matt, I really appreciate the time. And, and this has been a great conversation. I've really enjoyed it. Yeah. And if you're not planning on going to MDCE, go book book the go. book the tickets, um, <laughs> book it, Liz and uh, Liz and Matt and everybody at MRAA and and uh, the voting industry folks um, do it do an incredible job and uh, go go see Merrill Sessions. So thanks a lot, man. We'll we'll talk to you soon. All right, Matt. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Wow, what a great um, a, a great interview with Merrill from uh, First Approval Source. Uh, definitely go check him out at um, Marine Dealer Conference and Expo. Uh, stop by and, um, and and check out all the sessions. Uh, fill in as much as you can there because it's a it's a fantastic event. Also, if you want to keep the conversation going on how to sell more boats, make more money, and have more fun, a couple things that you can do. Uh, if you haven't uh, requested your your book, uh, <laughs> Boat Dealer Profits, you can go to boatdealerprofitsbook.com got a special offer going there right now. You can also check out some of our webinars. Uh, BoatDealerProfits.com slash webinars will get you uh, to all, all of our, our upcoming webinars. Just a, a ton of great information that um, is really actionable and, um, and a great way to, to learn more about the splash system if and how it uh, can be put into your boat business. Um, and uh, we do have a, another session of the splash system kicking off soon. So if you're interested in that, if you're a dealership owner, general manager, sales manager, you want to take advantage of that opportunity, boatdealerprofits.com slash apply, and that will take you to the actual application. Uh, it will, um, there's more details on there. There's some videos on there that will be helpful as to um, exactly how that program works. If you just want to talk and uh, take advantage of a strategy session, if you go to boatdealerprofits.com, um, on the right side, there will be a button that says strategy session, and uh, you can certainly take advantage of that as well. 
But um, I look forward to seeing you down to the dealer conference. Stop by, say hey. If you see me in the hallway, uh, make sure you let me know you're listening to the podcast. Let me know what you think of it. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to chat. If you think you might be an interesting guest, if you have some perspectives, some insights that you think would be valuable to share with the uh, dealers around the country, uh, North America, I I think we are international now. I know we've got some Canadian listeners, uh, but I think I saw a couple of uh, Australian downloads also, which is pretty darn cool um, for the podcast just getting started. Uh, But just email me, matt at BoatDealerProfits.com and um, get on the phone, have a, have a conversation, and, um, and have you join us on the podcast, uh, which could be a pretty fun time as well. So thank you very much. I appreciate it, and we will see you next time.